Well, here's a good question for public transport buffs. Which was the first city in Australia to have a fully electric tram network up and running? Well, one could probably guess it's Melbourne or perhaps Sydney, or it could be a trick question. And it's actually one of those newer fully electric networks like the Gold Coast, Newcastle or Canberra. Well, let us let 1960s tourism video guy give us the answer. This lies Hobart, capital of the island state of Tasmania. And by golly, he's right. It was Hobart. So in this video, let's have a look at the tale of how Hobart at one time led public transport in Australia with the first all-electric tram network, but today has lost its trams, it's lost its trolley buses, and even lost its passenger rail. I'm Marty, and welcome to Backtracks. Hobart in Tasmania, right back in 1893, had the first complete electric tram system in the Southern Hemisphere, never having had horse, steam or cable trams previously. And interestingly, it was the only one in Australia to operate electric double-deck trams. As said, it was opened in 1893 and in its prime years of the 30s and the 40s, it had eight lines, 32 kilometres of track and at its peak in 1937, a fleet of 75 trams. Trams run from the city south to Sandy Bay and Proctors Road, Denurn, to the west to Cascades and to West Hobart, North Hobart, and then further north to the Lena Valley, Moonar and Glenorchy. Following the introduction of trolley buses in 1935 and the growth of car ownership after World War II, the system eventually closed by 1960. Backtracks recently visited Hobart and had a chance to look at where the trams once went and what's left of them today, which, spoiler alert, isn't much. The original network had three main routes, the Macquarie Street Line, the Sandy Bay Line and the Elizabeth Street Line, about 12 kilometres of track. And for most of the life of the network, there were three main groups of lines, which ran from three different main streets of the CBD. The first line started in the city or the General Post Office and ran west-southwest along Macquarie Street. And the first is the Sandy Bay Line, one of the original lines that opened in September 1893. It ran from the city depot up Macquarie Street, then Davies Street and then started to head along Sandy Bay Road. And it followed Sandy Bay Road all the way to Beach Road Sandy Bay, appropriately ending right at the beach, which is still a very pretty spot to go to today. The Sandy Bay Line, which would have been lovely if trams continued along it today, was closed down in stages between 1942 and 1952. And trams along here were replaced first by trolley buses and then the trolley buses themselves were replaced by buses. The other line that started in Macquarie Street and which started near Hobart Railway Station and ran along Macquarie Street and up Cascade Road was the line to the Cascade Brewery, which was also called the Cascades Line. And you can still see in the road where the former single track was laid. Now this is a very picturesque drive up to an amazing view of the brewery, the Cascade Brewery, where you can do a brewery tour or you can have lunch and drinks across the road at the Cascade Brewery restaurant, which is exactly what we did when we visited there in December 2023. Now there was also a short branch from the Cascades line to Proctor's Road. And unfortunately for fans of the Proctor's Road tram, I couldn't find a single bit of moving film or a photo of a tram on the line. So here's just what it looks like today. The second set of lines ran along Liverpool Street. The line was also known as the West Hobart Line and commenced at the Hobart Railway Station. Hobart once had the largest railway station in the state. It was built in 1871 and was modernised in the 1950s. In the 60s, over 70 trains a day arrived and departed. But by the end of 1974, the final suburban train service ended. And in 1978, the final scheduled government passenger train to ever operate in Tasmania left. The station was later sold and redeveloped in the 1980s. Most of it was demolished for the extension of the Tasman Highway. And today, the redeveloped site houses the studios of the ABC radio and TV networks and some other local TV stations. The only remaining part is the original sandstone station building from 1871. 
Now back to the trams. The Liverpool Street line left the railway station and headed up up Liverpool Street through the Hobart CBD before beginning to climb westwards into the foothills of Mount Wellington. It travelled up Goulburn Street past St John's the Baptist Church, which has been converted into a bed and breakfast. And a bit further up, up until 1931, there was a unique Y section, a bit like a zigzag railway, where trams would then go up, then travel in the opposite direction to navigate a tight turn. The only remnants of this is there's an abandoned shop with the words the Y store on its facade. And after 1931, it was replaced by a more traditional but very tight curve. This is another very picturesque route as it wound its way up navigating all the way up to the heights of West Hobart. The line eventually terminated in Mellifort Street, West Hobart, where after 1958, the same route was replaced by the trolley buses, which ended in about the same spot. At the other end of Liverpool Street was the short North Hobart line that ran up to a terminus in Letitia Street, North Hobart and it was one of the earlier lines to close in 1950. The Liverpool Street line crossed the Elizabeth Street line at a junction which is now the northern end of the Elizabeth Street Mall. Now talking of the Elizabeth Street lines, this was the final group of lines and it was the longest and the busiest of the network. These lines also commenced operation at the start in September 1893 and originally began at Hobart GPO, General Post Office, and travelled north along the incline of Elizabeth Street through North Hobart, Newtown and on to Moonar. And before the construction of the Brooker Highway in 1961, Elizabeth Street was the main north-south artery of Hobart and often became exceedingly congested. Obviously, the trams were blamed for that. And it was so busy that apparently in 1951 it was reported that over 130 trams departed the GPO up Elizabeth Street between 4 and 6 p.m. every workday. The next line we'll talk about is the Lena Valley Branch Line. And this was a single track branch line off the Elizabeth Street Line. In North Hobart, the track diverted westwards along Augusta Road. The line was opened in 1922 and closed in 1957. And you can see what is possibly the former alignment in the road base in Augusta Road just near the turn off from Newtown Road. While it was single track most of the way, there were two passing loops, but they could only accommodate a single bogey car, which made very complicated running during peak hours. The line eventually terminated in Pottery Road in Lena Valley, and when the line closed, it wasn't replaced by a trolley bus, but replaced by a regular bus service. And in a nod to the Simpsons, perhaps, the Springfield branch line was a fairly short spur that diverted westwards off the Elizabeth Street line, and it was a tram from the Hobart GPO to Springfield in 1960, which was the final service to run on the Hobart tramways. And at the terminus, the house in the background of this photo is still there today. And the furthest north the tram lines got in Hobart was to Glenorchy, where again today, the former terminus of the tram line is still a bus stop and the church that accompanied that tram terminus is also still there today and hasn't that much changed from back 60 years ago. So where did the tram sleep, as my kids would say? Well, the city depot served the entirety of the network and it opened in 1893 and it was located on Lower Macquarie Street, just adjacent to the former Hobart Gas Works. The depot also housed later Hobart's trolley buses, which began operating in 1935. And then the depot continued to be used as a bus depot right up until the early 1990s, when it was sold and redeveloped into the Hotel Grand Chancellor and residential townhouses. There was one other depot, the Moonar Depot, which primarily served the Glenorchy and Lena Valley lines. At its maximum extent, the depot came to accommodate 36 trams on six lines. So what happened to Hobart's trams? Well, at the time, most of the lines were replaced by trolley buses, which started with a single route in 1935, and they proved pretty successful. Even the traffic is quiet. One by one, the tram lines were closed, replaced by trolley buses, or just by regular buses. But 
The trolley buses themselves started to be closed from 1959 and by 1968 they were also gone. So what remains of the Hobart trams? Well, at the time, most of the trams were sold off for scrap metal or used for sheds or outhouses. The only surviving complete Hobart tram, number 141, is on display at the Tasmanian Transport Museum, along with the restored double-decker tram number 46 and a couple of the former trolley buses. Other private organisations and the Hobart City Council have acquired and restored trams back to original conditions. And there are some plans to open a heritage or tourist tramway in various locations in Hobart, but yet none have come to fruition. So there you have it. The story of how Hobart went from having one of the most modern tramway systems in the Southern Hemisphere to now not having a tram network, nor trolley buses, or even passenger trains. But Hobart is great. It does still have the Cascade Brewery and it has the Mona Museum, both of which are some of the best places in Australia. And the view from Mount Wellington looking back over Hobart is not too bad either. Well, thanks for watching and I hope you found it enjoyable or at the very least informative. Thanks always to the information and image sources we use to make these videos and hopefully we'll see you again soon when we take another look at Australia's lost and found public transport. See you soon.